Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Patrick here and in this video I'm going to do another example dealing with symmetry. This example very similar to the previous one and highly recommend you watch the previous one before watching this because a lot of this stuff is going to carry over. But notice in the previous one we had f of x plus g of x here but now we have f of x times g of x. So we have to figure out is this function going to be even, odd, or neither in each of these cases here, right? If f of x and g of x are both even, if f of x and g of x are both odd, and then if f of x is even and then g of x is odd. So like I did in the previous example, what I'm going to do is introduce another function h of x, and I'm going to let it equal f of x times g of x. Okay, and now this first case, we're told f of x and g of x are even. So if f of x is even and g of x is even, what that means is f of negative x equals f of x and g of negative x equals g of x. Right? If both of them are even, then both of them have that property right there. And so now what we got to figure out is what's h of negative x going to be? If we can get h of negative x equaling h of x, this original function, then we know that this function is going to be even. If we can get it to equal negative h of x, it's going to be odd. And then if we can't get it to equal any of those, it's going to be neither. So let's see what happens. So if h of x equals f of x times g of x, then h of negative x is going to be f of negative x times g of negative x. And because f of x and g of x, they're both even, we know f of negative x equals f of x, as we showed on the side there. And then we also know g of negative x is going to be g of x, like that. And notice that f of x times g of x, that is just h of x. And so we just proved that uh, h of x is even. Okay, so if you have two even functions and then you multiply them, then that new function is going to be even as well. And we just showed it right here. All right, let's move to the next case, part B. So we're told f of x and g of x are both odd. So if that happens, that means that f of negative x equals negative f of x, and g of negative x equals negative g of x, like that. Right? f of negative x equals negative f of x, and then g of negative x equals negative g of x if both f of x and g of x are odd. So let's figure out what's happening with h of x. So h of negative x is going to be f of negative x times g of negative x. Then we can plug in these results. So we'll have f of negative x is going to be negative f of x. Put that in a square bracket. g of negative x is going to be negative g of x. Well, what's going to happen here, notice that the negative times the negative, these are like negative ones in front. Negative one times negative one is just positive one. And then we're just left with f of x times g of x, which is equal to just h of x. Right? So we just proved that h of negative x equals h of x, and if that happens, that means that what? h of x is even. So it's actually even in both of these cases here. Right? So if f of x and g of x are both even, then multiplying them, you get an even function. If f of x and g of x are both odd, then multiplying them, you still get an even function. And you can actually test this, so you can take, let's say, um, two odd functions. So let's say that f of x equals x, that's an odd function. Then let's say g of x would equal, uh, let's say, x to the power of 3 plus x. That right there is an odd function as well. 
Well, what's going to happen when you multiply them? If we expand everything, you'd end up with x to the 4 plus x squared. Notice all the exponents are even. So when you're multiplying two odd functions, that resulting function when you multiply those individual functions is going to be even as well. And that's just one of many examples you can do. It's always going to work out. Any odd function you pick for f of x and g of x, multiply those, you're going to end up getting an even function. Right? So the answer for a and b is both even, which was different than the previous example, because when we added them, the first case, the addition was even, and then the addition was odd. So just take note of the difference when you're adding and multiplying. Okay, now moving on to part C, f of x is even, so that means that f of negative x equals f of x, and then if g of x is odd, it means g of negative x equals negative g of x. So let's see what's happening to h of negative x. That's going to be f of negative x times g of negative x. f of negative x is f of x. g of negative x is negative g of x because it's odd. And so notice what we'll get here. We can bring that negative in front. We'll end up with negative f of x g of x. Put that in like a square bracket to sort of uh, separate it. And then notice f of x times g of x, that's just equal to h of x. And so we just show that h of negative x equals negative h of x. And so in this case, h of x is odd. Right? When this happens, a function is odd. We can see that here as well with the g of x, and it was odd. So if f of x is even and g of x is odd, or vice versa, if f of x was odd and g of x was even, doesn't matter which one you choose. Either case, when you multiply an even and odd function, what you're going to end up having is an odd function. h of x is going to end up being odd. So even, even, odd. Those were the answers for um, these three different cases. And then you can test this as well. So you could take an even function. Let's say we take, uh, let's say we take x squared plus four. Remember, you can add a constant with an even function, and then all the exponents have to be even. And then g of x. Let's say that it's an odd function. So let's say x to the power of three. Well, what's going to happen when we multiply these? We'll have x to the power of 3 times x squared plus 4. Notice we'll have x to the 5 plus 4x to the 3. So just a simple example. Notice when we multiplied, the resulting polynomial we get, odd, uh, odd exponent, odd exponent. So that means that that uh, multiplication is, uh, ends up being odd. Right, so you can try these, you can test these uh, results that you get with different examples, and there's many examples that you can test it with. But yeah, either case, for this function multiplying, you end up getting even, even, and then odd. And then if you're adding them, like we did in the previous example, it was even, odd, and neither.